Hi, today we're going to make 3D wooden pups. This one resembles my puppy, as does this one here too. We put them together with layers of wood that remind me of pancakes, so I call them pancake pups. So join us. Hi, this is Tweek. Today we're going to work on what I call a family pancake pup. It's actually a 3D wooden puppy, like here. I say family pup because we make them to resemble the puppies that are in our family. In this case, this would be Lily. She's one of our border collies. And what we do is make a pattern because every little piece in this pup is layered onto the next. We glue them together and sand it down, and then we paint it to look like our pup. The pattern would be different parts. We have a head and a nose and a couple of ears, a tail, and the body's interesting because the body comes in layers, think pancakes. There's a big back body layer, and there's a front and a back. In between it, we've got one, two, three, four pancakes in between. So when you line them all up, you end up getting the body of your puppy. So when you cut them out and sand it, put them all together, and you end up with your pup. So the first thing we would do is make our patterns, cut them out, and then take them to the wood, trace them out, and do some cutting. So we have our little pieces of wood that have been cut out with a scroll saw, then they each need to be sanded. All right, all our pieces are cut and they're assembled, very loosely assembled, because as you put your pup together, you want to decide a few things. How do you want his head to be up on the body, like he's more alert? Do you want him down like he's sniffing for something on the ground? It's part of the fun of doing this. You can put some personality into your pup just by angling the pieces. Do you want his back to be all straight? Or do you want some bumps in there? Dogs have a shoulder that usually goes down, slopes down to their hips. So all these little things you determine. And once you decide, I'm gonna put his head up, not all the way, but like he's looking. And I'm going to deconstruct him now. Now I have an idea of where I want to go. And we start with his tail. I want his tail to be meeting up with the top of his haunches and I want it to be just off to the side. If he was in alert mode, his tail would be straight up. But he's a little harder to fit on the shelf. <laughs> so I put my tail off to the side and we're going to just tack it with a little bit of glue, hot glue, and a little bit of wood glue, which will secure it tightly. So just decide you really can't go wrong here because doggies move all the time. I'm going to just take my finger and come around the edge. And then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. Go ahead and place it. We have our first piece down. I'm going to flip him over. And you see that is not going to move. Thank you, hot glue. Next piece, meet up with the top. Just feel it with my finger. If there's a little bit of ridges there in the dog, that's fine. And put hot glue in the center. As soon as he's completely dry and solid, we'll sand him and then we'll move on to painting. And now we're ready to give him a light coat of paint, acrylic white, all over. That will be the base coat and I will add colors from there.
I'm using acrylic paints. I'm going to turn this collie into our collie, Colin. This is going to be fun. He has a lot of white on the bottom, which is going to help a lot. So let me start mixing some colors for him. Definitely going to need brown. I'll leave that up like that. And I'm going to throw some copper into it. They call them reds, but it's more like an Irish setter red. So I'm going to mix a few colors here and see what I come up with. Just a tiny, tiny dash of this. Oh! <laughs> Not quite the color I want, so I'm going to add a little more of the copper to this. There we go. That's more what I want. More copper, less brown. And since our doggy is mostly white on the bottom, I'm just gonna lay this on the top. Oh, I'm liking this, good color. His fur comes down that way, irregular on the sides. Fur on his belly, he definitely has white legs and white belly. So let's just run with that. Since he is copper colored all over the top and kind of saving his head for last, I'm going to come down about three quarters of the way. So most of his face is this coppery color and his ears. Okay, well, let's just get those done. I think we're ready to go to a different color. Because being a try means he's got some caramel markings that complement the red quite beautifully. I'm ready to mix up some color and it's a, like a golden tan color that highlights his face. And I'm going to do that by using this color I already mixed up and adding some yellow. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to make enough of it because I don't want to have to reproduce it. I've got yellow. Let, let me just see what happens if I mix these two together. It's a little bit too yellow. It's coming, it's coming to a mustard color. That's good. I think I have to bring in more of the copper again. I'm going to put a little more of the copper in there. And what we're going to do is highlight different areas of his face. I'm going to add one little drop of cream. I want just a little bit lighter. And Colin has a bit of a white nose. He has a little bit of the tan coming down on the sides. Colin, you're starting to appear. And he has a little bit right over where his eyes are going to be. It's like there's a transition between the copper color and his white feet. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> He's starting to look like my pup. And just leave it ragged because that's the way his fur is. I'm going to set him down and work on his face. Now, he does not have a black nose, he has a pink nose. We'll work on that, but I want to do his eyes. I'm going to make a round circle of the eye color, then I'll come in afterwards to augment that. Now, his eyes are like a caramel brown color. You know what I think I'm going to do is take the copper and add some brown, and I'm going to make a circle where the eye would be. He's got very good eyesight. He sees every little kitty that's ever in the neighborhood. Now, this isn't a bright pink, but I need pinky flesh tone, I thought. Maybe some of this brown, some of this pink. Get me the right color. One more pink. Okay, now we're getting closer. So that's a funny color for a dog nose, isn't it? What? That's what Colin's nose is. A little bit of black. We're going to make his pupils. Here again, I'm just gonna gently touch the brush and come into his eye and leave a little dot and spread it around a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a line for his mouth. And I am gonna take a little bit of the black and pull in some pink. Little tinny dots where his whiskers would be. Let's put a few of those on there. I want a little bit of an eye lid. I'm gonna use a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the yellow. I want like a lighter tan color. Well, enough to show a difference between the fur color and the copper color of his eye. Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to just come very lightly over his eye and over. Ooh, I do like it. I'm trying to get a nice contrast between his eye color and the fur around his eye. Okay, let's 
good. And just coming over the top of his eye, making like a U shape, and then coming up like you would have high eyelashes. That's good. That side turned out better. Let me go this side again. All right, I like that. And I'm gonna pull a little bit off, just that way. Okay, here we go. Touch, touch, touch. I'm just gonna touch. <laughs> the funny how the character comes out. Just a little bit of a, <laughs> it's really cute. So I'm gonna take the white while I'm here. I'm just gonna pull in on his mouth just a little bit. And from this point on, it's all cosmetic. Do you want a little more pink? Do you want a little more tan? I actually like the way his mouth's getting a little darker there. It reminds me of his mouth. I like his eyes and I'm gonna go with that. Next comes the varnish. We are all done. Check you out puppy. I didn't put anything on the bottom of you because I don't want you to stick. Oh my gosh, it's Colin. It's my puppy. And there you have it. Here's Colin, our little butternut collie. He's actually a border collie. And let's compare him to Lily. These two are best buds. Oh my goodness, that really looks like them. Is it time to get fed, guys? Yeah, they tell me it is, and they're always saying that. So if you like what you've seen here today, Give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment. Wouldn't you just love to see your family pet made into a pancake wooden 3D pup? I love ours. See you again. <laughs>